Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Just when we thought we had a good understanding of what NVIDIA were doing in the RTX 40 series of graphics cards, something comes along and turns everything on its head. Now, I will say that I wasn't initially intending to record today, hence the reason I'm doing this audio only, as I've been working on a few things in the background, and also there has been quite a lot of construction outside of my place because of a burst water main, but that's, yeah, by the by. But anyway, let's focus on a very intriguing set of tweets. Now, first, a couple are from Kopi 7 Kimmy. The RTX 4080 has seen a cut from uh, 420 watts down to just 320. So obviously that's around 100 watts reduced. That's quite a lot. Now I say around because ultimately we don't know what's going to happen in terms of overclocking, power limits, and what custom AIB model cards are capable of. So obviously, you know, a likes of an MSI, you know, high-end GPU may have different power limits. We're not too certain about that so far. The RTX 4070, though, has a more subtle cut. It went from uh, just 300 watts down to 285. Now, of course, ultimately, these cards are not launched properly at the moment. In fact, they're not launched at all. There are test boards which have been now provided to certain AIBs, but they're very locked down. So basically, something like 3D Mark may run. However, the vast majority of games and software will not. And obviously, one of the reasons for this is so that, well, stuff just doesn't get leaked, or at least the leaks are a lot less meaningful. Now, for reference, we knew previously that the RTX 4080 was scoring somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 points. And the 4070 is around 11,000 points. To be clear, by the way, this is in time spy extreme. There have been a lot of figures for the 4090, uh, which is, by the way, 450 watts. Uh, the lower scores seem to be somewhere in the neighborhood of around 19 to 20,000, but I have heard of some tests which are actually getting much higher, somewhere in the neighborhood of 23, 24,000. Again, this is all going to depend on power configuration and a lot of other stuff. So the question naturally becomes, have the specifications for, let's say, the 4080 changed at all? And the answer is, I have no idea at this point. One person told me that there were cuts in the specifications, but A, they couldn't provide me what they were, and B, it's only a single person, and I'm not 100% convinced that it's the case. It's very possible that these are just test boards, but what makes it quite difficult is that Kopi 7 Kimmy has basically said the problem was power consumption. So maybe NVIDIA decided to reduce the cost of the boards, and this doesn't necessarily mean, though, that performance is going to be snipped that much. It's very difficult to know. I'll be keeping an eye on this because I'm very interested. Another possibility is that NVIDIA were like, you know what? Cranking the power up to, let's say, 420 watts is not really doing that much for us in terms of performance. This is speculative. I do not know this for certain. I do not have a test board. But maybe, and you guys know this yourselves, just because you increase the power, it doesn't mean that performance increases linear linearly. Jesus, I couldn't say that word. So, for example, if you increase power consumption at, you know, lower, you know, lower end, at like 10%, 20%, yeah, you may have a similar improvement in performance. But when you start getting to, like, the kind of limits, you could put 25% more pack juice for that thing, and you may only get, like, 5 or 10% additional performance. Obviously, I'm vastly simplifying things here just for, you know, an easy representation of what I mean, but you guys get the point. So it's possible that NVIDIA were like, you know what, it's not worth it. Um, it's just not giving us that amount of extra performance. Maybe they'll let um, AIBs go ham with custom designs. And furthermore, and another thing, I mentioned this in a couple of videos already, but I have heard that the mobile implementation of... Um, Lovelace is actually very, very, very efficient, more specifically AD104. In fact, someone told me it's more efficient than N33. Now, they are on different process nodes, with 33, of course, being N6. But even so, um, basically speaking, a couple of people have, to uh, a couple of other people have told me that 
RTX 40 is very, very efficient at lower clock frequencies. Basically speaking, what I'm trying to say at this point, and I'm sure this is going to clear up in the next few days, there are a lot of questions. It's also very possible that the RTX 4080, even with this 100 watt reduction in power consumption, will perform pretty much identically to what we'd initially thought. And that's simply because, of course, we were dealing with, well, basically, not exactly final production silicon and obviously test boards and all of that stuff. So basically, this may mean absolutely nothing in the long run in terms of performance, but it's just definitely a positive for us as gamers, because obviously if you can get still very impressive performance, but with much reduced power consumption, not only does that benefit you in terms of your power bill and heat output, but it also means that the cards themselves, for example, the cooler can be less intricate, it can reduce costs, and, well, also means that it could fit, in theory anyway, into a smaller form factor build. Adding, however, to the confusion is that, well, the person who used to be Kitty Corgi, they are now Elsian Realm, um, or Kitty, or at Kitty, Kitty Yuko, excuse me. I'm having one of those days, I really cannot speak, jeez. Anyway, basically speaking, this is PG139 SKU340. I won't read out all the specifications because I'll be here until tomorrow if I go through the FP32 units, but long story short, you'll notice that they have changed compared to, well, the other options. For example, the rumor is that the 4090 has uh, 128 SMs enabled. Whereas this is just 112. And also the memory bandwidth is, as well as the amount of memory has been cut with just a 320 bit bus and 20 gigabytes of memory total. Now, of course, the question is, and by the way, there's a nice comparison on videocards.com, um, which of course I'll link in the video description of this. But ultimately speaking, there's a lot of questions. So first of all, the most logical thing is that this is a 4080 Ti and it will launch at some point. It's probably not going to be at the same time as the 4090 and the 4080, but it could launch six months later, whatever. And I don't really need to explain what a 4080 Ti is. You guys get the idea. Another potential is that it's a different, it's not even gaming related. It could be for, for example, prosumer work, a quadro, whatever. Another potential is it's actually the 4090, and basically speaking, NVIDIA have cut the specs of the 4090. Again, I don't know whether this is the case. I'm somewhat skeptical of this, but another thing is we don't know what the performance targets for Navi 31, 32, and 33 actually are. You can see on screen what I've heard, but ultimately there are so many conflicting numbers for... Um, RDNA 3, it's very difficult to know what is actually true and what is actually false. Um, I personally think, and again, this is a guesstimate based upon all of the things I've been told, but I personally think it's more likely to be something like 2.2 to 2.5 times at most and at least faster than uh, something like a 6900 XT in raster performance. But ultimately... It could all be wrong. Like, any of these specifications could be wrong. And, you know, the Navi 31 highest end SKU could be instead somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, you know, 80 times more powerful than N21. Obviously, that is ridiculous, but I'm just saying we do not know this for certain. So it's going to be very intriguing. Another thing I want to mention, actually, just real quick, is that DDR5 at 6000 MTS actually seems to be basically the quote-unquote sweet spot for Zen 4. I'm going to leave a link to this in the video description because WCCF have basically exclusive, but the bottom line is that uh, this allows, basically speaking, the CPU to run one-to-one -one with infinity fabric ratio, and this basically means that obviously you could go faster in memory and we all know that uh, Zen 4 seems to overclock really well. They have really been pushing this with extended memory profile for overclocking, aka Expo. Um, and so obviously you could run it at faster memory speeds and who knows what timing is going to, or timings, excuse me, are going to, how they're going to impact performance. But um, yeah, 
so just for quick reference, Ryzen 3000, which was based on Zen 2, was 3800. Then um, this got slightly upped for Zen 3, with Ryzen 5000 being recommended to be, well, 4000 megahertz, or sorry, MTS. So it's going to be really intriguing, actually, how this ends up. It seems like, according to what WC have here anyway, higher frequency dims are supported, but you basically start to drop down an infinity, uh, infinity um, hash ratio. So obviously if your IFC um, starts to drop too far, um, you know, if your infinity fabric starts dropping too far, then uh, yeah, that's not going to necessarily be good. Um, and in fact, from what WC are stating, if you're running DDR5-6400 uh, MTS, it'll be running at 1 to 2, and they actually say that it could be detrimental to gaming performance. Um, so yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Honestly, I don't know how popular, um, for a lot of folks, the Zen 4 and, um, you know, Intel... 13th generation processors are going to be if you've already got a decent platform. Obviously, if you have something like, you know, a 9700K or a 3600X and you're looking to, you know, upgrade or you need those extra cores, this is definitely going to be an exciting time. My prediction, and I'm let, you know, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong about this. If you have something like a, like a 5800X 3D or a 12700K or, you know, you get the idea. Would you upgrade? Um, I suspect many are going to wait, want to wait until the 14th generation of Intel processors or Zen 5, but I guess it's going to be very interesting. Another thing is that I suspect many people who want Zen 4 are also going to want to wait for the X3D chips from AMD. Obviously, they are going to be more expensive, but they also come later, and we know that performance most likely is going to be quite a bit faster. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed today's video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like here and all that stuff, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.